Are you going to be writing a lot of checks or are checks getting bigger? I think it's a combination of both. Uh, the checks have been getting bigger over the last five years. And we've also grown our investment team from two people two years ago, I mean, 10 years ago to now 12 people in our investment team. It's a broad range of target industries. Yes. I actually wonder how much of that is in the physical world versus software. Uh, most of it is software. Okay. Um, you know, we're very you know, focus on business at scale. And a lot of that, you know, has to do with software. Although we do have some, uh, you know, semiconductor beds, uh, you know, that are more in the physical world. Mal, what's fascinating about the companies you've chosen to back is the diversity of their leadership. A lot of female founders, diverse founders. Are there still a lot of companies being grown by diverse founders at the moment? Because we know that when Silicon Valley Bank pulled back, when ultimately the economy pulled back, it's been harder for diverse founders to raise funds. I think diverse founders are, you know, we have like 41% of our portfolio is female founders. Um, and they are amazing uh, entrepreneurs. I think they need a little bit, bit more of a nudge uh, to, move, uh, to move ahead with their fundraising. But they've been, you know, they are even within the downturn it's much easy, you know, it's much better right now than when I got started 30 years ago, almost, for diverse founders. So it's all relative, right? And there speaks the fact that you have founder experience, both you and yes. your co-founder. That was sort of your MO, the, the, dive, the way in which you stood out from the crowd. How are you nudging your own founders right now, particularly in the world of AI? How are you ensuring that your portfolio companies you already have are ensuring they're not going to get disrupted, that their lunch isn't going to be eaten? Yeah, you know, I, I think the message that for founders, no matter what, is always like focus on the metrics that matter, work really hard uh, to achieve those and forget the noise. It's the same in AI. Um, you know, um, we've you know, been in the Valley for, like I said, almost 30 years. So I saw the web one, uh, the web revolution mobile, and now AI. It's almost the same dynamics, right? Uh, initially, there's going to be a lot of noise and excitement, uh, and eventually there's going to be some massive companies that will be created. Uh, so we are telling our founders to keep their eyes on the ball, you know, on those long-term wins, not on those short-term wins. It raises the question of how quickly you raise the funds. Mm -hmm. Was AI always your goal or did you have to pivot, take advantage of LP interest? You see what I mean? Yeah, no, no, not at all. You know, I think we're a generalist fund, the same we do AI. It's just a, some part of what we do, right? There's a lot of life sciences, healthcare, etc. But I want to make a point that AI is truly a horizontal technology, meaning that it can be, it's going to be applied to all industries. It's almost like, you know, you couldn't be a company and not have a web presence or a mobile strategy, et cetera. Same with any industry that we're going into. So for our existing founders that are, you know, that perhaps started the company before ChatGPT, which yes. is when the population uh, became aware of AI, we're telling them, hey, there's new technology, you should be adopting this um, as we go. And same with LPs. I mean, our job is to be, you know, give the right advice to our current portfolios and be ahead of what's coming, right? So or, or temper expectations, yeah. right? There's, there is sort of an of LP course. impetus. I, I mean, you call yourselves generalists. Uh -huh. Think about life sciences, climate, and artificial intelligence. What about the inbound? Are you yeah. receiving many more pitches from AI than other Absolutely. areas? Absolutely. It has changed dramatically. I mean, you could say even 12 months ago or 18 months ago, the volume of inbound from crypto was really, really high. That's almost gone down to zero. And today, you know, the inbound from AI is very high. So it's climate, right, is what founders care about. Um, I do think, uh, you know, this AI, like I was mentioning, if you started any software company today as a founder, uh, you would probably be thinking about how do I incorporate AI into my company. So whether, you know, when, when you're at the application layer, we're going to keep seeing more and more of these AI companies. Not wishing to, for you to give away your secret sauce, Mar, but uh -huh. the founders you find, how are you searching that? I know you go to dorms, you've got sort of the, the way in which you get students on board, but where geographically are these founders? You come from Spain, you're the co-founder originally, uh, coming from Iran as well. How, how are you diversifying the kind of people that you're managing to find to build these companies? Yeah, um, we have various, I mean, I think uh, sourcing or finding the right founders in venture is uh, very intentional. So we have, uh, we're not sitting in a chair waiting for people to show up with these inbounds, you know, we're out there trying to find them. Uh, we run multiple programs. 
Uh, perhaps dorm of our most well-known programs are Pair Dorm, which is where we spend a lot of time in universities trying to um, find those great high potential founders that can go off and start companies. 40% of our portfolio will come from those founders. And this is a, you know, this is how Pair started. You know, it, it's not, it was not immediately obvious 10 years ago that you should be able, you should actually build a firm and go and proactively source those kinds of founders. In the last couple of years, we've put together a program targeting female engineers. It's called Female Founder Circles. It's actually been extremely successful where, you know, we form community for female engineers that before they're out there starting their company, um, we've done four cohorts and within the first three cohorts out of 105 women, we've had um, nearly 60 companies come up with that have raised uh, significant seed right. rounds. So, that's, I, you know. I, I do want your secret sauce. I'm sorry. I want you to give me <laughs> it right now. So you invested in DoorDash early. DoorDash was a success. How did you identify them? Well, you know, I think uh, the DoorDash story is really interesting. It's part of our, how Pear works. My, um, my partner, Pejman, and I started Pear. We're both very different, yin and yang. He had been an angel for many years. I was an operator. And we came together to actually uh, form Pear, which is more than investment. We're helping to build companies. Peshman um, met Tony and reached out to me and said, Mar, I met this founder. He's amazing. We should back him. And I said, what does he do? Uh, he said, uh, food delivery. I said, oh, my gosh, not food delivery. That's a really complex, highly operational business. We're not going to do that. He's like, no, 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 you have to meet him. So I actually spent a lot of time diligencing the company, walking up and down University Avenue and talking to every um, restaurant owner or manager right. and asking them why and uh, you know a lot of what they said is oh my gosh this changed my business and Tony's amazing and then Peshman and I um, spent a couple of hours with the whole founding team and Tony was actually um, perhaps the only CEO that instead of slides just goes to a whiteboard and tells you why this is going to be a great company and mm -hmm. Um, he said it was not going to be a food delivery company. He was building the largest last mile delivery company. So even then, uh, early on, he had a vision that yes. wasn't yeah. clear. Uh, that was super clear for him. 